God done with Tulsa? Or can the oil of the Spirit be struck again? Has COVID caught the buckle of the Bible Belt with their pants down? In the middle of the world's darkest hour, Bishop Joseph Castillo of All Nations International Fellowship believes the spirit of revival is here and ready to be poured out on those who fearlessly preach the glorious full gospel of Jesus Christ and refuse to shut their doors. In the middle of this drought, a river is springing forth. The River Church has come to Tulsa by divine mandate and will be opening its doors this summer. Join us at the River of Tulsa at All Nations International Fellowship. <laughs> they're buried there and they're getting along just fine, amen. It's where the Shekinah glory used to appear and has believed that when the Messiah comes or returns, depending on what religion you're in, do you follow me? If he, when Messiah comes, Islam, Judaism, or returns, Christianity, when Messiah comes and returns, he will manifest his glory, and the glory of God will manifest, and he will return through this gate. So to stop this, they sealed up the gate. Isn't that interesting that man thinks they're going to stop God? But this is what they thought. So they sealed up the gate, and then not only did they stop there, but then they built tombs in front of the gate. Because according to Jewish tradition, rabbis cannot walk among the dead. So they thought by putting tombs in front of the gate, no good rabbi would ever go through that gate. And so they thought they would prevent the return of Jesus by putting a cemetery there. But then those who believe in the resurrection, they put their tombs there as well. Because when Messiah returns, they think that they'll be the first ones to go up. <laughs> but you don't sow a tree, you sow a seed. That seed, say it's apples, is a little black, the body of that seed is a little black thing, right? And so that's the body that you plant into the ground. But what comes out of that is another kind of body. What kind of body comes out of that? The body of a tree. And that tree, of course, will produce other apples. So he's, he's giving you something in the natural realm to understand the spiritual. He says, you fool... That which you sow is not alive except it die, and that which you sow is not the body of what's going to be, but is just a grain, maybe wheat or some other grain. But God, verse 38, but God giveth it a body as he, as it pleased him, and to every seed his own body. Now here's where it gets juicy. Say juicy. juicy. All flesh is not the same flesh. But there is one kind of flesh of men, and there's another kind of flesh of beasts, another of fishes, and another of birds. All of these fleshes, all of these bodies are different kinds of bodies. A chicken's body is different than your body. Amen. Some flesh we eat, others we don't. We don't eat rats. We don't eat dogs. We don't eat humans. There's some flesh that we don't eat. Am I right? But we do eat cow and goat and lamb, etc. And some of you heathens eat pig. Hallelujah. <laughs> Especially the Chinese. That's the number one thing they like to eat. Say with me, all flesh is not the same flesh. Verse 40. There are also celestial bodies. Say bodies. And bodies terrestrial. But the glory of the celestial is one, and the glory of a terrestrial 
is another. Meaning here that there are pros and cons to the types of bodies that there are. Obviously, if you're even looking at the terrestrial bodies, there are pros to having a bird's body. You can fly, hallelujah. But there's a lot of cons too. Somebody might eat you, hallelujah. Amen. But here he's saying that there are pros and cons to celestial bodies and to terrestrial bodies. So let's look here at a couple categories of bodies. Celestial beings, he says, number one, and terrestrial beings is number two. Let's briefly look at these definitions. Number one, celestial. This is the Greek word eis, e, excuse me, eos. Eos. This means bodies that exist in heaven. So he's not talking about birds, fish, humans. These are bodies, say bodies, that exist in heaven. Amen. Somebody say ET phone home. <laughs> Amen. Bodies that exist not on this earth, but they exist somewhere in the third, fourth, or fifth, sixth heavens. According to Jewish tradition, there's ten realms. We know the Apostle Paul talked about three. He said, I was caught up into the third heaven. Jews say there's ten. But either way, we know that there are multiple realms besides our stratosphere, which is the earth realm. So celestial beings are bodies... They're not spirits, but they're bodies that live outside of our, stra our stratosphere. Number two, let's look at the word bodies in the Greek so we're cleared up. The word bodies in the Greek is the word soma, meaning a living body, a flesh. And the root word here for body is the word slave. And I wanted to point this out and I want you to remember that the root word for body is slave. Why? Because the purpose of a body is to carry out the tasks of your mind and of your heart. So your body is supposed to be slave to your mind and to your heart. However, after the fall, we, our hearts and mind, have become slave to the body. How do we know? Because we sign up for gym memberships and we never go after the first month. So our mind and our heart said, I'm going to get in shape this year. But the body says, after one or two workouts, oh no you ain't. You're going to stay in bed and catch up on some sleep, hallelujah. So we become slaves to the body, but the body actually is supposed to be our slave. And so now we see with even the celestial beings that the bodies are the slave. It's what God had chose to give them to carry out what's in their heart or in their mind and what they're supposed to do. Number three, definition terrestrial is epigeos, meaning earthly or earthy. So a terrestrial body means an earthy body, a body that was made on this planet. So celestial beings, I want to submit to you today. Is God done with Tulsa? Or can the oil of the spirit be struck again? Has COVID caught the buckle of the Bible belt with their pants down? In the middle of the world's darkest hour, Bishop Joseph Castillo of All Nations International Fellowship believes the spirit of revival is here and ready to be poured out on those who fearlessly preach the glorious full gospel of Jesus Christ and refuse to shut their doors. middle of this drought, a river is springing forth. The River Church has come to Tulsa by divine mandate and will be opening its doors this summer. Join us at the River of Tulsa at All Nations International Fellowship. So 
a terrestrial body means an earthy body, a body that was made on this planet. So celestial beings, I want to submit to you today, that they do have bodies. Are you following me? Repeat after me and say, celestial beings have bodies. First of all, most people don't even know they're celestial beings. They think that just what they experience in day-to-day reality is all there is. But let me tell you, there are celestial beings. So the celestial being, because they have a body, they cannot enter into a human. And a celestial being cannot enter into an animal because they have a body. They have bodies. Therefore, they cannot enter another's body. Do you hear me? So let's take a look at some celestial beings. Because some of you might be wondering, what kind of celestial beings can there be? Amen. Well, there's number one, we see in scriptures, seraphims. Seraphims meaning burning ones or nobles. These types of celestial beings have six wings. So let's look at their body. Let's consider and imagine what they might look like. The celestial beings, and there's another picture we have of one of the celestial beings. You can put it on the screen. There's one. So these celestial beings have bodies. This particular seraphim has six wings, but they use two of them for flying. The other four are used to cover their face and their feet. Their bodies are also full of eyeballs. Now, these celestial beings, these seraphims, are in the presence of God. And I don't know if some of them are with Lucifer. Some of them might be with Lucifer. Because another word for seraphim in the Hebrew is a fiery dragon. Fiery dragon. So in many traditions... It's taught that Lucifer was a seraphim. He was in the presence of God. That's why we see in the book of Revelation this fiery dragon. Now you do understand that in Aztec culture, Mayan culture, they worshipped the dragon. And you go to the other side of the earth, to the Bhutanese culture, to the Chinese culture, they worship the dragon. Why are these cultures worshiping snakes and dragons? You go to Laos and to Buddha Park and you see these deities in Buddha Park and they are seven-headed snakes. Why are they worshiping seven-headed snakes? Because these are real celestial beings that humans had come in contact with. Do you understand me? Am I losing anybody yet? Is it getting weird yet? (laughs) These are real physical beings with bodies. And so now we find that these beings, some of them have gone and followed Lucifer, and some of them have revealed themselves to Mayans and Aztecs and Bhutanese, and they had said, I am a god, worship me. Now the interesting thing is, when you look into the text of scripture, you find that some of these beings have terms applied to them called dignitaries or deities. So they are dignitaries, they are nobles, they are deities, little g. And they reveal to themselves, to people groups, as I'm a god, worship me, and you'll get my blessings or you'll get my cursings. And you have to understand that these are a reality for these people groups. How do you know it's a reality? So much so that the Aztec would take thousands of thousands of babies and they would kill their babies and sacrifice their blood to these dragons. That's how real it is to them. Because it is real. Amen. So this is one. There's the cherubim. They are powerful, almost frightening. These are very powerful beings with four faces and four wings. These have straight legs capped at the end with shiny bronze bull hooves. hooves. The cherubim, another body, celestial being. There is a chariot creature. It's not a car It's not a chariot like you would imagine. It's actually a living, breathing, physical 
a, a chariot that is a, that is a beam. It's a living bean. And these beans are called the Merkaba. The base structure of this Merkaba angel or angelic beam is a chariot composed of four beans. And these are called living creatures. Those throne angels have four faces on four sides and their heads are arranged like in a square and they can move in any direction. And these uh, you can imagine them being more like, not a chariot, but more like a horse, for example. Someone would get on a horse and ride a horse. Well, uh, these, uh, some angels, I don't know who, but they ride these, these beans like a horse. There is in scripture a being called the behemoth. There is Leviathan. Dragons are mentioned in scripture 34 times from the Old Testament to the New Testament. Do you hear me? There's a couple of beasts mentioned in Revelation that comes out from a pit to fight with the two prophets. One beast looks like a... Hey, stop scrolling right now because we have an exciting announcement to make to you. We have powerful teachings and preaching and encouraging words that will change your life. And it's all on our YouTube channel, Living Proof TV. So come down, go to our YouTube channel, watch all the great content episodes we have. You will not be disappointed. Revelation, teaching, preaching, authority in the Word of God. You're going to be inspired, you're going to be encouraged, and you're going to be ready to give the devil a black eye. And the Bible says that the mantle fell off of him, and he saw him no more. And Elijah took hold of his own clothes, he rent them into pieces. And he took the mantle of Elijah that fell from him. Do you hear me? There's a couple of beasts mentioned in Revelation that comes out from a pit to fight with the two prophets. One beast looks like a leopard and his feet are like a bear and his mouth is like a lion. And this is the image that you have behind me. This is a beast. It's a celestial body. Do you understand me? Now there is, and here's where it gets scary or interesting, but there is goat men. When Pastor uh, Martin Reed was here, his daughter, spiritual daughter, she served under and was mentored by Bensa Itahosa. And Bensa Itahosa had taken her with him into a village in Nigeria where they had to go pray for a goat cast a demon out of a goat. And she thought it was so strange because she had to cast a demon out of a goat. And when Ben Seed Hosa came up to that goat, he laid hands on that goat and he said, come out of here, you foul devil, in the name of Jesus. And so the interesting thing is, she th first of all thought it was so weird that he's going to pray for a goat. Second of all, the thing that was weird is when they arrived in the village, the lady who was had the goat, she said, please pray for my husband. And her husband was the goat. So she first thought this is some kind of weird bestiality thing. So Benzie and Hosa actually went, laid hands on the goat and said, come out of her. And as he did that, the goat began to vomit from its mouth and poo at the exact same time. It began to come out of both ends and the goat collapsed. And within minutes, the goat transformed into a man. It was a man that came under a witchcraft curse in Nigeria. There are goat men in your Bible, not Narnia, not Lord of the Rings, say in your Bible. They're called satire, S-A-T-Y-R. You can look it up in your King James Version and look it up in the Hebrew. Amen. That's where Narnia got this from. He got the goat men from Scripture. Amen. So there are goat men several places in the scripture. There are a cockatrice. A cockatrice is a two-legged serpent with a rooster's head. And in the Bible, when you see, you should trample upon the lion, the young lion, and the otter. The otter is the cockatrice. It's a, it's a, it's a spiritual, uh, it's a, phys excuse me, a celestial being. Amen. One angel that Daniel described as was a man dressed in linen. 
and with a belt of fine gold around his waist. His body was like topaz, his face like lightning, his eyes like flaming torches, his arms and legs like bronze, and his voice was like the sound of a multitude. This was a celestial body, a celestial being. According to Jewish tradition, which we don't accept and believe, but I just want you to think about it. According to Jewish tradition, there are several levels of celestial beings. And these angels that look like men are a lower level of celestial beings. And these angels that look like men might have been the same ones that came in Genesis to take human beings' wives uh, as wives. Now, unicorns are mentioned in the scripture nine times. Why am I going over some of this? I'm making a case that the reality of beings outside of this planet do exist. Amen. And many come and go from this planet. But Hebrews 12, 9 says this. It says that God is the father of all spirits. Amen. So every creature in the entire universe, celestial or terrestrial, were made originally by God. Verse 41. There is one glory of the sun and another glory of the moon and another glory of the stars for one star differeth from another star in glory. What this means is that all bodies, be it celestial or earthly, have different benefits and advantages. Verse 42. So also is the resurrection of the dead. It is sown in corruption, but it is raised in incorruption. Your body is sown in corruption, but raised in incorruption. Verse 43. Your body is sown in dishonor through death and is raised in glory. It is sown in weakness, but it is raised in powers. Now watch this. Verse, those verses say that the human body, the flesh or slave, is sown in dishonor or weakness. This is how spiritual beings see our earthly bodies they see our earthly bodies as weak and the fact that we die is, is a dishonorable and weak thing that's how they view our bodies but when your body is shed you are raised in power or in other words you are raised in a powerful spiritual body now with that with that said this means that you become spirit only without a body after you die. But you're given another kind of body if you're born again. And we call that a glorified body. Yeah. Amen. Now the interesting thing is, the Greek word devil, say devil, in the New Testament is the word diamon. D-A-E-M-O-N. Some of you guys know people named Damien. Don't name your children Damien. You're calling them a demon. This is where the Hebrew is, Damien. So Damien in the Hebrew is where we get the English word demon from. So what you find in the Greek, in the Greek they use the word devil. But in Hebrew it's actually demon. I like that worship song from the African that is from Zimbabwe. Ricky Ta, demon. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Bishop Joseph Castillo here on the headquarters, the world headquarters of All Nations International Fellowship. And here we have just purchased this property. It is a, a, actually a, a appraised at about $5 million. This is all of Tulsa. All the Broken Arrow, as you can see, we're basically on flatlands. We're the only hill in the greater Tulsa area. So we're here at the new headquarters of All Nations International Fellowship. And here we have the global ministry that we've come to America to establish our world headquarters here in the greater Tulsa area. Also here on the property, we have the River Church Tulsa, which is on the other side where the steeple is. This building behind us, we are, everything is mint condition. 
It's beautiful, it needs no work, no repair. It's pristine, mint property that we've just purchased. Needs no work, but we're gonna put some work in, and we're gonna put some money in, because we have to transform a few of the uh, sections, halls, facilities. This right here behind me is going to be, on the outside gazebo, is gonna be a coffee shop. It's about the size of a Starbucks with an additional 100 seats for the outside. This will be the El Rio Cuban Cafe. We'll be serving the city uh, from this beautiful view overlooking Broken Arrow, overlooking Tulsa. You look all the way down there, you see Oral Roberts University. Right in front of us, there's Rayma. You're gonna be able to sit here in this beautiful view and have your lattes, your coffees, your breakfast in the morning, your bagels and cream cheese, uh, for lunch sandwiches, steak sandwiches, Cuban sandwiches, yucca fries, all those things. And then on the, on the next floor up is where the elementary school, River Kids Pre-K and Elementary School. So we're, the classrooms are already set, ready to go, already there because this was a school before. So the schools are ready to go. Uh, we're gonna just put up a sign so we're gonna need to raise a few grand, maybe $15,000 to put up the several signs. But everything is already here, and we're gonna be putting the school on the second floor, cafe on the first floor. On the back side is all the administrative offices. It's 25,000 square feet that God has put in our hands. Praise the Lord. So God has put this 25,000 square feet in our hands an additional nine acres of land here. So we want you to sow into the ministry, connect with us, www.theriverchurchtulsa.com and invest into this. We're believing for somebody to give $2 million and that will launch this vision worldwide and it'll help us. But it's closed, we purchased, we're the owners and you can participate with us. Hey, stop scrolling right now because we have an exciting announcement to make to you. We have powerful teachings and preaching and encouraging words that will change your life. And it's all on our YouTube channel, Living Proof TV. So come down, go to our YouTube channel, watch all the great content episodes we have. You will not be disappointed. Revelation, teaching, preaching, authority in the word of God. You're going to be inspired. You're going to be encouraged.